Hello everyone, welcome to my channel 100% Concept Clear. So in this video, we are going to discuss about network analysis. So in this network analysis topic, we are going to discuss about introduction of network analysis and components used in network analysis and also rules for constructing network diagram and finally techniques in network analysis. So first let us see why this network analysis is used. So it deals with managing project. So network analysis is used to manage projects. So what does mean by project? So projects are the something that we are going to do to fulfill our business objective. So as you all know, projects consist of many activities. So the project manager should plan, schedule and control each and every activities in that project. So to do these activities effectively, we are using network analysis. So network analysis main objective is used in managing projects. So next project management consists of three phases. So this project management consists of three phases. So those are planning, scheduling and controlling. So we should plan what are the activities that we are going to do and we should schedule all those activities. So what activity we should do first and after that what we have to do. So like that we should schedule all these activities. And also you should control all those activities like whether the activities are performing well or the activities are completed within the time so like that. So network analysis is used to do all these project management activities effectively. So this is mean by network analysis. And next we are going to discuss about what are all the components used in network analysis. So first one is activity. So it is represented by arrow mark. So so this is the example of network diagram. So with the help of this diagram only we will do this planning, scheduling and controlling. So this is the network diagram. So the first component used in this network diagram is activity. So what is meant by activity? It is represented by an arrow mark. So here the arrow mark represents activity. So this is A arrow mark which means this is A activity. So likewise. So then it represents an action and consumption of resources and time required to complete that particular portion of a project. So this arrow marks represents the resources that we are going to consume and also the time taken to complete this particular activity. So all these things we represent in arrow mark. So here A is the name of the activity and in within this bracket we will write the time required to complete this particular activity. So next here we have written B. So this is B activity and time needed to complete this B activity is mentioned here. So likewise. So next component is event or not. So it represents starting and end of an activity. So if we have this A activity, so the starting and ending of this A activity are called as node. So we represent node in this small circle. So every activity will have two nodes. One is starting node and second one is ending node. So for this A activity, the starting node is 1 and the ending node is 2. So if we take this B activity, the starting node will be 2 and the ending node will be 3. So if we take this C activity, the starting node will be 2 and ending node will be 4. So likewise. And starting node is also known as tail and ending node is also known as head. So we also use this name to represent starting node and ending node. So starting node is also known as tail and ending node is also known as head. So that is mean by event or node. So next component is dummy activity. It is an imaginary activity. It does not consume any resources and time. So we have already discussed about activity. So activity is represented in arrow and this is the dummy activity. So dummy activity is also represented in arrow mark but which is in a dotted form. So this dotted uh, like arrow mark is known as dummy activity and this dummy activity does not consume any resources and time because it is just an imaginary activity. It is not the actual activity or the real activity. It is just the imaginary activity. It is used to uh, reduce the complexity of the network analysis. So later I will explain it clearly. So just now remember the dummy activity is an imaginary activity. So next component is predecessor. So it represents the before activity of that particular activity. So predecessor is nothing but the before activity. So the before activity of a particular activity. So if we take this example. So we have activity A, B, C and D. And predecessor of those activities are given here. So C. For A activity, there is no predecessor, which means A activity doesn't have any before activity. So, the A activity is the starting activity. So,
so we have uh, drawn the a activity without any before activity so a is the starting activity so a activity arrow mark is here and we should give two nodes to the activity so uh, starting node is one and ending node is two so a activity is completed next to b activity so b activity have a has a predecessor so which means b activity starts only a activity is completed so which means a activity is the before activity of b activity so see here b activity is here and b activity is before activity that is predecessor activity is a so we have drawn b after completion of a so a activity is completed in second node so we have started b activity in the second uh, node so where the a activity completed and we have completed this b activity in the third node so next one is c so now see the predecessor of c so predecessor of c is a which means c starts where a ends so here also the before activity of c is a activity so only if we completed a activity then only we can uh, start c activity so see here a activity completed in this second node so we have started uh, the c activity in this second node because uh, see what a is the predecessor of c so the c is before activity is a so after the completion of a activity we have started c activity so c activity completed separately in this fourth node so here we should follow the rules that we have to follow when we construct the network diagram so that i will discuss later so now uh, see what is mean by predecessor so c is also over next d activity so d activities predecessor is b and c so which means d activities before activity is b and c so that means d activities starts only when b and c activity comes to end so see here so b activity completed here and also see here so c activity completed here but what is our condition we can start d activity only where b and c activity completed combinedly so but here we have uh, b activity completed in third node and c activity completed in fourth node so here in the situation to combine this fourth activity to the third activity we have used dummy activity so this is the purpose of dummy activity so it is just an imaginary activity so here in the situation we can draw the c activity just like the b activity like b activity started in second node and completed in third node so we cannot draw two or more activities starting from the same node and also completing in the uh, same node so this is a rule in construct network diagram so to avoid that scenario we have completed this uh, c activity in the fourth node and uh, but our condition is we should combine the b and c activity in the same node so to do that we have included here dummy activity so we have started this dummy activity from this fourth node and completed in this uh, third node so here what this dummy activity does so it has combined a c activity to the third node itself so see b activity started from second node and completed in third node so no problem but in case of c activity we have started c activity in second node and we have completed in fourth node but we should complete the c activity in this third node itself so we have uh, given here a dummy activity so the c activity is continued in this fourth node and ended in this third node so now we have combined this b activity and c activity in this third node so now b and c activity has ended in this third node so now we can draw a d from this third node because d activity should start only where b and c activity ended so b activity and c activity ended in this third node so from this third node we have started d activity and this d activity is completed in fifth node here we have already used four in this node so we are using five in this node so this is how predecessor works so this is known as predecessor so it is nothing but before activity and also we have discussed here why dummy activity is used so dummy activity is just like this imaginary activity so it is used just to reduce the complexity in the network diagram and also it does not contain any time or consumption because it is just a dummy activity so it does not consume any time so just note it so these are all the components in network analysis so next we are going to discuss about rules for network construction so rules for network construction so this is the network diagram so what are all the rules we have to follow while constructing this network diagram that is what we are going to discuss now so first one is each activity is represented by one arrow mark 
so one arrow mark represents only one activity so see here here a is one activity so we have used one arrow mark and b one arrow mark and c activity one arrow mark and d activity one arrow mark so only one arrow mark represents one activity so next one an activity can begin only when all its predecessors are done so what is meant by predecessor before activity so an activity can begin only when all its before activity are done so this is what we have done here itself so we can start these activities only if its predecessors are completed so for a activity there is no predecessor and b activity there is a and it's also for c activity there is a predecessor so if we want to start this b and c activity we should complete this a activity so see here a activity is completed after that only we have started b and c activity so likewise and the third point is no single activity can be represented more than once in a network so we cannot represent one activity more than once in a network diagram so each activity can be represented in the diagram only once next point is no two activities should have the same starting node and the same ending node so two or more activities can't contain the same starting and same ending node so this is what we have seen here so see here b activity started from second node and completed in third node but in case of c activity it is started in second node but we cannot complete the same activity in uh, third node itself so we have completed this third activity in fourth node and then we have used here dummy activity to combine the c activity in this third node so this is how we should do when two activities should start in the same starting node and same ending node there we use as jammy activity to do this and next one is the network should have a unique node numbers so node number is nothing but this number inside the circle so all this uh, numbers should have a unique number which means we cannot repeat this number all these are unique number so see the event or node numbered 1 is the starting node and an event with highest number is the ending node so for the starting of the activity we use as the smaller number which is 1 and when network goes on we use as the largest number in the end so this is what is explained here next one is there should not be any duplication of event or node or numbers so this point we have seen here itself so we cannot duplicate any numbers so all the numbers can be used only once we should not repeat it next starting node is also called tail and ending node is also called head so starting node is also known as tail and ending node is also known as head next one a network should have only one start event and one end event so if we see a network as a whole so also each activity should have a one starting node and one ending node and also if we uh, look as a entire network also this network should have only one starting node and finally it should end in the only one ending node so next point is dummy activity can be used only if it is necessary to reduce the complexity of a network so this is also we have discussed here so these are all the rules of network construction so we should follow all these uh, rules while constructing the network diagram so next we are going to see about techniques in network analysis so we have two techniques in network analysis first one is critical path method which is known as cpm and second technique is project evaluation review technique which is pert method so in next video we will discuss in detail about these two techniques so this video is over in this video we have covered introduction and components like activity even not and dummy activity and predecessor and also we have discussed all these component using this example and then we have discussed about rules for network constructions if you have any doubt leave your doubt in the comment section and if you found this video useful like it and share with your friends and help them to understand concept easily and for more related topics subscribe to my channel thank you for watching